You may be feel fired up for 10 minutes after this little talk, but you're not going to feel fired up forever. You need to put systems in place. You need to get discipline. And like Justin says, you need to get an atmosphere of people around you who are going to keep you accountable and not make it easy for you to continue to be a fucking nobody. And then you're going to fix your life. Otherwise, you're going to stay a nobody. How do you be successful as a man? We'll talk about it. First thing, you need freedom because you ain't a man if you're not free. If you're working your ass off, you're a slave. And you may sit there and go, I'm not a slave. I get paid really well. Listen, the slaves got free food and free shelter in exchange for work. Now all they've done is got rid of the food and shelter deal, give you dollars, which you spend on food and shelter. And you basically have nothing left. So you're still a poor slave. The first thing you need is freedom. If you're not free, you're not a man. First thing. You're not a successful man. So you should always be working towards freedom. And I mean freedom with your time. Do what you want. Freedom with your location. Go where you want. There's a riot. Cool. Go in Tokyo. See you later. Bye. Go into Australia. See you later. Bye. Freedom. One thing. The next thing that constitutes success to me is your network. Who are you talking to? Who are these people? Who will answer your phone calls? Listen. How about two phones? Identical, almost. Twins. I've got two phones right here. And I can call one of many multi-millionaires. And when they see my name, they're going to pick up the phone. They're going to be like, oh, Tate. Oh, wait, guys, wait, wait. They're going to stop their conversation and be like, whoa, fuck. Tate, what's up, Tate? Because they know I don't call for no bullshit. They'll be like, fuck, money, money, money phone trade. So I can call multi-millionaires right now. I can have the best idea in the world. I can call a bunch of multi-millionaires right now and say, look, I need 100 mil. Here's my idea. Boom, 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 boom. We can make something happen. You can't do that. I can do that. Freedom Network. And then you get into the aesthetics of life. For people to view you as successful, you need good body language. You need physical presence. A man who's not dangerous. A man who has no physicality. Who will never be seen as successful. Oh, I'm successful, I'm rich, and I'll, uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll break your neck. Look how big my hand is. I'm going to grab you by your neck and choke you until you die. Who's successful now? I'm breathing and you're not, so I'm more successful than you. You can't be a little bitch. And I understood this from a young age as well. So I'm sitting there at a young age thinking, I need to get a network of high net worth individuals. who are, Or not even rich men, but men who are driven. Men who are making money. And I need to find a way to talk to them, work for them. Learn what they know so I can become one of them. I need to get body language and physicality. I need to become big and dangerous. I need to be able to display that without saying it. I need women in love with me. I need beautiful women who adore me. I need these things because this is what shows the world I'm the fucking dog. So I'm sitting there and I understand what I need. And I knew this at 21, 22. A lot of you people are older than this. Older than me. You're older than I was. And I'm telling you something. You're sitting there going, yeah. Didn't even cross your motherfucking mind. You've been too busy jerking off the porno and not thinking about what you actually need to do to be successful in this world. So these are the things you need to be a high value man. Because if you have all those things and then you get some money and you have geographical and time freedom, you're now genuinely successful. Your mentality is heavily linked to your reality. And the fact that most people have such weak mindsets comes from the fact that they have a weak life, a weak body, a weak social circle, a weak network, a weak bank account, a weak relationship, and then their mind is weak. Well, of course. Whereas if you had a group of soldiers around you, men who were dedicated, who would ride or die with you, if you were strong, if your woman would never leave you no matter what because she idolizes you, then your mentality would be strong. Your mind would be strong by extension. So if someone comes to me and goes, I doubt myself, I usually look at them and go, yeah, I understand why. You're a little fat piece of shit. You're stupid. Of course you do. Hey, Andrew, Um, so how do I get like a six-pack quick? What's the best, fastest way to get a six-pack? Why does it have to be quick? Why does it have to be easy? Why do you think life is all quick and easy? Why can't it be hard and difficult? Why can't you suffer? Because suffering is what gives it value. If everyone had a six-pack and it was quick and easy, then it wouldn't be valuable, would it? If everyone walked around with a quick a six-pack and they got it easily, then no one would give a shit. The whole point is that it's difficult to get. Value is linked to difficulty. If you want something that is valuable, you need something which is difficult to obtain. The fact that you just said you wanted it quick and easily shows that your whole mental model is fucked. You shouldn't be thinking about quick and easy. You should be thinking about hard, suffering, pain, going through it. That's what you should be thinking about. This is going to be hard, but I'm going to do it anyway. 
Because when it is done, then everyone's going to know that I went through something difficult. Why do you want it to be quick and easy? Success is the most overused word. Because we talk about success. Oh, this guy, he's really successful. Not these motherfuckers. So let's say I'm working at a company. Yeah, I'm the big boss. Let's say I'm a guy. I go college. I go university. I go to this company. I work, I work, I work. I become a manager. I'm on 150,000 a year. I got a company BMW. And I wear a suit. And everyone at my job does as I say. By all measures, I'm successful. But here's the truth. When I leave that company, no one gives a fuck about me. I'm a nobody outside of that one building where I'm a little bit important. My wife doesn't want to suck my dick because I'm fat. Because I didn't have time to train, so all I did was work. I got a BMW. BMW. I know hoes with BMW. BMW. I didn't even consider that a car. BMW. That's not a luxury car. That's fucking basic. I'm pushing supercars. You're nobody. You're not successful for shit. Success for a man actually comes in many realms. It's, not, it's actually nothing to do with being good at your job. Having money, yeah. You don't have to be good at your job. Depression is the ultimate motivation. Oh, so you're depressed. Okay, that, so you come along to me and you tell me you're depressed. I expect to see a huge list of what you're achieving per day. If you're unhappy with your life and you're depressed, I don't expect you to be popping pills and sitting and laying in bed. I expect you to give me a huge list of everything you're achieving per day. Depression's a fantastic motivation, you know, but people are told the opposite. No, you should feel depressed. That's wrong. You should be happy anyway. Take the pills. Stay home. Take some time off. Complete garbage. You're depressed? Okay, get up. Go for a run. Lift more weights. Make more money. Get a second job. Get more girls. Like, you you can outrun depression. I'm, I'm a man who's always believed, and I think every man understands this, action over inaction. And and I think it was General Patton who said, a good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. You gotta do something. And you gotta do something fast. Yeah. You're just sitting around talking about it and hoping for things to get better. Has never, I don't know, I don't know about you gentlemen, but every time I ran out of money in my bank and I thought I'm gonna sit around and hope for something to come, it never really worked never out. Right. It never worked out, you know? It's like, you, you can't be sitting around waiting for things to happen to you. Also, I think, especially in the West, a lot of people's problems are all in their mind. And I'm not saying that mental conditions aren't real, because absolutely some are. But I try and explain to people, look, if you, the only thing on the planet you have genuine control over is your state of mind. Like you can't even control your health. You might get hit by lightning. You can't control other people. You can't control the weather. You can't control anything. The only thing you can affect in genuine real time is how you feel in your head. If someone comes to me and goes, oh, I get really shy and anxious. I'll say, so? Right. But not, not, oh, okay, that must be horrible. No, so? Do it anyway. Yeah, but I'm shy. I don't care. I don't, no one cares. The whole world doesn't care. Nobody cares. <laughs> go. If you could drop dead tomorrow, the world wouldn't care. The sun's still gonna rise. People are still gonna go to work. So you're gonna sit here and worry about speaking? When people come to me and say, I'm not happy, I say, why should you be happy? You're, and, and, and we're all adults here. The, this infantile mindset that we're all supposed to be like we were when we were three years old and, oh, something shiny, laugh all the time, run around in circles. We're grown-ups and we have responsibilities and we have problems and we have pressure. And you don't necessarily have to be happy to perform, especially if you're a man. Like, like women have this, uh, I, I will, I guess to a degree they're born lucky. Women have this mindset where they can, that people expect women to be happy. Women need to be happy. But as a man, you have a burden of performance. You, as a man, you shouldn't be waking up going, how do I get happy? As a man, you wake up and say, okay, how do I perform? You know, and, and happiness will come at the end of the performance anyway. But if your number one goal as a man, if your number one, uh, mission in life is just to be happy, that's, it could be an extremely vapious existence and you're not going to be a man of substance. The men of substance out there are not necessarily happy people. You, you, Mike Tyson wasn't happy when he was smashing people's faces in. That's not how you get there. You don't get there being happy. It's not. It's, it's just a, a complete, the whole mindset, the whole idea that, oh, we all need to be happy all the time is the reason you have men on the streets taking drugs, looking for a quick fix. So they don't want to do any real work to get any genuine fulfillment. So they end up shooting drugs, running around being fools. Yeah, and that's what yeah. happened. Motivation isn't real. Everyone says this. Motivation is not real. Discipline is real. I do not feel like training but I still train because I'm a disciplined individual. You don't get to go through life only doing the things you feel like doing. Do you know who gets to do that? Women. Beautiful women. Beautiful women get to do what they feel like doing. As a man, you have to do the things you're supposed to do. Because what we said earlier is absolutely true. It's player versus player. My friend. And I wake up and I decide, even though I don't feel like working, I'm going to work my ass off. And you wake up way down there, a peon, and you can't be bothered to work. What chance do you have against men like you? You don't stand a chance. Now, if you're going to wake up and look in the mirror and understand that you're absolutely not really crushable, 
that you're a rabbit and that lions exist. And that's not going to motivate you to do something. And there's, about there's it. no point in asking us a question. You know exactly what you need to do. If you want to stay killable, then stay killable. But I can't live that way. I would refuse to live that way. It's a disgrace to my bloodline. It's a disgrace to my parents who struggled to raise me for me to be anything other than the best version of myself. That's honor. I have honor to my last name and to my, and to my ancestry. This is down to you.